All right, so now let's render our volume. So um, I'm gonna just uh, cl close off these, uh, or turn off these splines that we uh, rendered, and, or that we set up. And so we can just focus on the uh, volumes. The splines kind of take a little bit long to build sometimes, and I don't wanna um, have them slowing things down. Um, so let's go look for our volume here. We got our volume, and let's just turn that on and pick a camera angle that's nice and uh, close by it. So I'm going to switch back to camera two, which we've kind of been using to, you know, get a closer look at some of our elements here. And let's uh, hit the lock key and just kind of um, go and look at our cloud like so. And let's just fire off a render from camera two. I'm going to select camera two from the drop down in the IPR and hit uh, the render button. Now you can see here by default, we've got this nice, um, very faint looking uh, cloud um, showing up here. So uh, clouds being volumes, they take a special type of a shader. And actually, um, we just got to create that shader in the matte context. So let's just go back over to the matte context over here and create a new shader. We're going to call this volume. So hit tab, type RS uh, Material Builder. And then we're going to, uh, I'll call this volume. And I'm going to just, uh, let's just give ourselves a little bit more room over here and here. And I'm just going to jump inside here. And here we're going to um, delete the standard material and hit tab and type volume. And so we get this RS volume and we just wire this into the, into the oops, not the shadow, into the volume input of the uh, redshift material. So if I select the volume and uh, we, we just have to assign it. So let's go over here and uh, maybe I'll collapse these all down so we can get a better list of our all of our materials here and let's just drag in our matte volume into the this uh, into the material field on our volume object if we fire off the render again uh, it should look pretty much the same let's just start dialing around the parameters so we know that on our volume like we did before if we dive into our volume we middle mouse click here you can see we've got a name attribute and uh, this density right here this is indicating that there is a actual volume here you see the little cloud icon it's blue that means it's a v2b and then we can see the resolution voxel count all that stuff and so uh, that density is actually by default being set in this scatter channel right here. So that's how, if you did have other fields like temperature or anything like that, you could use temperature or um, burn or whatever field in your emission to kind of make flame-like colors. We just have a cloud, so we're just gonna focus on that right now. And uh, let's just crank up the scatter coefficient to some high number, so like 10. And then if we bring our absorption coefficient up as well, you can start to see that um, thickening up here. Uh, what I want to do is actually um, kind of increase this a little bit more. Let's bring the scatter coefficient up to 60 and then the absorption coefficient up to 30. So you see that it gets this kind of nice um, almost rim going on with it and this um, electricity uh, lightning is starting to illuminate the, um, the cloud as well. I just want to tint it a little bit so that it looks a little bit more on theme with our orange thing that we got going on here. Orange for uh, Houdini. And let's just uh, go and select a color in our tinter here. I'm just going to click that square. Um, maybe I'll select the red color and bring it to the right a little bit, just so it's a little bit more in the orange spectrum. And then maybe I'll desaturate it a little bit, um, like so. So that should be good. And then um, I think what I also want to do is actually kind of dial in the rim light. Um, we kind of have left the lights alone since the lighting section, but I really want to hit this edge and get it to kind of pop a little bit more over here. Um, this needs to be a little bit more towards orange, I think, something like that. And maybe I'll just saturate it back a little bit more. Like so, for now. Um, I'm going to go back up to the object level. And here, I'm just going to give myself a little, let's go find where our our rim light is. Now, I the camera right now is locked. I'm going to unlock it. And I'm going to just look around and see, um, I'm going to hit the S key and select this light. So yeah, it looks like that's redshift light too. I'm just going to relabel this rim right now. And then this one will be key. So I'm going to jump inside the rim and see if I can um, kind of get a better angle on this cloud to kind of make it pop a little bit more. Um, let's go into cam, look through light rim. Um, so here we are in our rim light. You can see that really the center of our view is the back of this um, poly object here. I really kind of want to aim it more towards the edge of this. So I'm going to hit the lock so that I can just move my view around um, 
and have it adjust the positioning of that light. And then on my uh, rim light, let's also just look at the spread uh, shape. The spread is very wide. I want to narrow that up so it really is acting more like a spotlight, you know? Um, and then at this point, I, I kind of want to see, I, I kind of want a wider view of this to see how it's affecting um, the rest of the geo. So I'm going to just, uh, let's just switch this over to camera one. And we're going to need to restart the render in order for that to take hold correctly. Um, so you can see that that's kind of there. I think that... I'm going to say, let's just bring this back a little bit to kind of uh, get that rim just kind of mellowed out a little bit. See, I'm just kind of inching my camera behind, so it just really kind of profiles right here. And then also what I want to do is maybe um, turn on my splines just to check and see how the splines are interacting with this lighting as well. So let's go turn on the hair splines, just the hair splines, because those are the ones that kind of work around this edge of it. And um, I'm liking that this lower edge is catching. That's cool. And we start, we're starting to see this. And I also think that um, once we, I'm, I may want to increase the intensity of this, of this light, although I do think it looks cool. Maybe it's time to look at some uh, buckets. So I'm just going to hold down the shift key and drag a square over this and turn on bucket rendering mode. And then maybe I'll go over here and go into the Let's see the out context and select my redshift, my redshift ROP and maybe crank up the sampling settings to something like uh, 32 and 64 on the min and max samples. And maybe I'll actually go up to full res here. So let's just change our fixed, fixed scaling up to 100%. Um, I like the angle I think that this light is at, so I'm just going to untick the lock here and switch back to camera one. And then I think that what I want to do is actually, what I'm seeing here is this this lightning looks like it's a little bit too saturated. So let's just go kind of um, tweak that a little bit. Let's go to the um, lightning mesh light. And then up here on the texture, if we look at the color, you can see that I fully saturated it here. And what I think like helps sometimes is to actually just slightly desaturate the color to um, get it to not have such a um, harsh red fall off around it inside of these um, inside of this render. So I'm just going to pull, I just pulled that back a little bit. And um, maybe I'll actually also, so let's just switch back over to uh, bucket mode or uh, progressive mode. And you can kind of see here that the um, the light is starting to appear. Um, it, it just start, it's starting to kind of blend a little bit more to me. Um, I might just bring this back even a little bit more in the yellow direction. Something like that um, really seems to... Um, feel kind of like how I want it. I just guess uh, having too much orange and red saturation values in there it can really get these volumes a little bit out of control. Um, so that's starting to look a little bit better to me. And um, yeah, so I think that that's uh, really as far as I wanted to go with uh, the volume rendering. Um, that's the basics of it. You can dive in and do all sorts of uh, more experiments with that. And that is the basics of rendering volumes. So next let's look at instances.